Happy Children's Book Week, boys and girls, parents and teachers. My name is Sue Kuntz and I'm a storyteller, was a teacher and a librarian, and I am elated to have been invited to tell one of my favorite stories of all time. A story written down by Tom Birdseye and illustrated by Stephen Gamel. It's got to be one of the best stories that I keep coming back to year after year. I want you to enjoy it as much as me because I think I was probably one of the main characters as a kid. Her name is Ora Mae Cotton, a crabapple orchard. And without further ado, let's the story begin. My name is Ora Mae Cotton, a crabapple orchard. And last night, somebody stole my tooth. And when I catch him, I'm gonna open up a can of gotcha and send a mare mail to the moon. You see, it was uh, three weeks ago. I was down by the creek catching all the crawdads I could when that kind of tingling feeling got right there in my mouth. It's sort of like when you're biting down real hard on toast and peanut butter, but you miss the toast and peanut butter and you're gnawing down real hard on your teeth instead. Well, I was popcorn in the pan, excited that that tooth was gonna come out any second. But my dad off, that's what I call my daddy, he has this saying and he says, now don't go milking the cow while she's asleep, which is apple orchard talk for, now don't go blabbing about something before you're sure what you're blabbing about. So I didn't say a word. And then, last Monday, I was walking down my dirt road, fetching the mail, and right where all the mailboxes were, there was Marietta Bean. She was jumping rope like she knew all the answers to the world. So I had to stick my tongue out and give her a big raspberry just like this. <laughs> With that vibration, of my tongue and my lips together, it started moving that tooth so fast and so loose as a goose on roller skates. <laughs> I decided to tell everybody whether they want to know about it or not. And then Thursday, that tooth was so wobbly. It was hanging on by one root and one piece of skin just flapping back and forth. Well, I could push it out and I can move it in there back and forth, back and forth, all the same time I helping mama slop those pigs. Now mama, she looked at me, she said, now Oreo, that's my nickname, you know, the sweet cookie that I am. Oreo, I don't want you flopping and flapping that tooth like that, not while you're working. That sort of reminds me of your cousin Cyrus before he got braces, stay away from that. Well, I did. I worried that tooth like mad inside my mouth as long as I could. And then Friday. Friday night came. Mama had fixed the best spaghetti dinner for all four of us at the table. And while my big brother, Bo Dean, and my little sister, Kelsey Ann, were arguing about whether Arlene Peterson's pigs could actually kneel down before dinner and say a prayer, they were throwing noodles back and forth, and that's about the time. That tooth of mine, it plopped right out of my mouth and fell, fell, fell right smack in the middle of my spaghetti dinner. Hee <laughs> hee! Well, Mama, she told me, you take that tooth, Oreo, and you put it underneath your pillow. And that way, the tooth fairy would come and, and take it and, and give you money. Shoot, howdy! Money, Mama didn't tell me how much, but I figured a thousand dollars, maybe a hundred dollars. What I could buy with all that money? Well, I excused myself out of that table and I gave myself a big old bath and, and I jumped right into bed so I could dream about all those wonderful things I'd buy. Well, like I said, somebody stole my tooth. So I guess it didn't me, do me any good to be dreaming all those cool dreams. Well, that next morning, I woke up and I ran to go find my mama. She was out there at the garden. She was just picking those red tomatoes and, and some zucchini and squash and radishes. And I said, Mama, is a tooth fairy a crook? 
Well, my mama, ooh, her eyes got really big as saucers, and she stepped back, and, and, and she said, Now, honey, Tooth Fairy, she's as sweet as flowers in the spring. She didn't take your tooth. Well, the Tooth Fairy didn't take my tooth, Mama. Then somebody who is so crooked probably screws his socks on every morning took my tooth. And when I catch him, I'm going to open up a can of gotcha and I'm going to send him air mail to the moon. Now, Oreo. I think what the Tooth Fairy's doing is she probably took your tooth and she's probably stringing it on a, a beautiful necklace filled with teeth and she'll probably give you some money tonight. Be patient. Well, that didn't sound right to me. Did that sound right to you? I mean, what good is a Tooth Fairy if she forgets? Well, Mama, she went ahead and pointed me in the direction of Daddy. He, he, he'll help you out. He might be a little smarter than me. Oh, my dad, ah, he is a smart man. He's a real thinker. Why? He takes and sells watermelon to all the grocery stores. He knows a little bit about everything. So it took me a while to find him, but there he was by the, the tire swing, moving back and forth in the wind. And, and I could hear him before I saw him, for he was singing and singing while he was shaving his face. If you ask me, that's probably not a very safe thing to do. Why, half of Dadol's face was filled with shaving cream. The other half was as soft as a baby's belly, as my Dadol would say. Dadol, somebody stole my tooth. And when I catch him, I'm going to open up a can of gotcha. I'm going to send him air mail to the moon. And now, honey, said my daddy, don't go fretting about that tooth fairy. She did not steal your tooth. Nope. No, in fact... While I'm thinking about this, this is what I figured happened. The Tooth Fairy took your tooth and probably is grinding it down a big old machine. And out comes this wonderful tooth dust, which then is turned into money. And then she takes that money in and she goes and she'll probably be buying you some real estate somewhere in Florida. Yeah, yeah, that's what she's doing. Well, I, I don't think that's right, Dada. No, I know that's not right. They don't do things like that. Well, Dada, he was already just dreaming. And finally he said, well, honey, why don't you go see your big brother Bodine? He's not all what you think he is. Go ask him. Bodine! It's got to be Bodine. Why, he's as ornery as a bull in a beehive. And about two and a half weeks ago, he fell out of the hayloft and broke two of his own teeth out. I know he took my tooth and he glued it right into his mouth. Bodine, you're my crook who stole my tooth. And when I catch you, I'm going to open up a can of gotcha and I'm going to send your mail to the moon. Well, I caught him all right. He, he was crawling out from underneath the corn crib with his pet snake fluff. And as he put that big old snake around his neck, he looked me straight in the eyes and he said, Ora May, I did not take your tooth. What would I want with a girl tooth? You know that girl teeth do not fit into boys' mouths. I didn't do it. Darn, I didn't even think about that. I'll tell you something, Oreo. That tooth fairy, she takes teeth and she gives them to babies so that they can chew on rocks and shoes and stuff like that. <laughs> That's crazy. I've never heard of such a thing like that. And Bo, Dean, you shouldn't be saying things like that. It's true. Look at your little sister, Kelsey Ann. Where'd she get her teeth? Kelsey Ann. Why didn't I think of my little sister, who is as ornery as Bodine, plus 10? I'm going to find her, and when I catch her, I'm going to open up a can of gotcha, and I'm going to send her air mail to the moon. Well, as I was running back towards the house, there she was. 
She was just hanging off one of the crab apple tree limbs, upside down, hanging from her legs and just swinging back and forth. And I said to Kelsey Ann, you stole my tooth, Kelsey Ann, and I want it back. And Kelsey Ann, she just replied just as sweet as can be. I didn't take your tooth at all. I'm as sweet as a rose in the snow. Ask Mama. Well, if you didn't take my tooth, and Mama and Dad on, and Bodine didn't take my tooth, and the Tooth Fairy didn't take my tooth, who took my tooth? Well, at that very moment, I didn't know what to do. I just stood there, just shocked. Tears started coming down my eyes. I, I couldn't help it. And I started figuring out why in the world I even wanted a tooth fairy in the first place. And boy, those big old tears just came on down. And here comes the best thing I want to tell you. Now us cottons, we fight a lot, we argue, we scramble around. But when it comes to somebody who's upset and crying and worried, why they come in a flash and they always have our back. And sure enough, in five seconds flat, flat Kelsey Ann and Bodine and Mama and Dada and even that pesky neighbor of ours, Marietta Bean, they were all there trying to help me out. And I thought I'd just dig my hands in deep into my pockets and just cry some more. <laughs> until I felt something small, kind of round, bottom of my pocket. Oh, I know what it is. My face is red. My toes, oh, they're curling. I'm like a possum up a plum tree and I'm as embarrassed as a zebra without stripes. You see? My tooth, it was right where I left it. Oh, I wonder if tooth fairies send motor mouth kids like me air mail to the moon. <laughs>